welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. It's always confused me why the Boss Blues Driver gets categorised as an overdrive pedal. I mean, I know it's often marketed as such, and if you look on YouTube you'll find a lot of videos of this being compared directly to the likes of the SD1 or the Tube Screamer, but from a circuit perspective, this has a lot more in common with a distortion pedal. I recently looked at the MXR Distortion Plus, perhaps the simplest distortion circuit you can get. This features an IC op-amp based gain stage followed by a hard clipping diode arrangement. Bossy's DS1 distortion expanded on this by adding a transistor boost stage, a tone stack and input and output buffers. The Blues driver goes even further by adding a second gain stage and tone stack as well as an active filter after the volume control. It's a fairly advanced distortion circuit which provides a more versatile effect than most of its kin, so let's dig a little deeper and find out what's going on. I'm going to skip over some of the things inside this pedal like the power supply and the gy fit switching so we can get on to the more interesting stuff. Starting at the beginning of the signal path, this transistor buffer stage is important for matching the high impedance signal from the guitar's pickups and changing it into a low impedance signal the following circuit will work with. Next is the first of our gain stages and unlike the Distortion Plus or the DS1, this isn't using an IC op-amp chip, rather it's using discrete transistors to build an op-amp from scratch. These two gyfets form the differential pair which will compare the two signals and this following transistor will perform the amplification. The gain control sits in the negative feedback network exactly where we'd expect it to be. This is a much simpler arrangement than what we'd find inside an IC as it only features a single amplifying element which itself can be overdriven if a lot of signal gain is applied. This is followed by a number of interconnected RC filters which form a fixed tone stack. This applies an EQ curve to the signal to correct for the mid-peak applied by the discrete transistor amplification. Next is a common sight inside distortion pedals, a hard clipping diode arrangement. Having two diodes back to back for each hemicycle of the waveform raises the amplitude threshold where clipping will occur. This will distort the signal, but not as severely as if we only had one diode per hemicycle. So far we have a pretty ordinary distortion circuit. Amplify, filter, clip. It's what happens next that gets a little unusual. No, it's not deja vu, this is the same discrete transistor gain stage repeated again after clipping, but importantly the gain control in the feedback network shares the same potentiometer as our first gain stage. What this means is that adjusting the gain control increases the gain at both of these gain stages at once. So we amplify, filter, clip and then amplify again. Each of these discrete transistor stages is itself able to clip the signal if the gain is set high, giving us potentially three points of distortion in the circuit. This is why there's such a textured and versatile range of distortions from the Blues driver. At low gain settings it's really only the clipping diodes adding a touch of grit, but the more we increase that gain control the more all three of these sections contribute towards the drive, resulting in a lot more distortion from this unit than you might anticipate and overloading those transistors gives a distinctly fuzz like quality. This also has the advantage of being very responsive to playing dynamics. Picking softly or rolling back on the guitar volume control to weaken the signal hitting the pedal will apply minimum distortion, while digging in hard and rolling on full will saturate those transistor gain stages, perfect for reactive and dynamic blues playing for which the pedal is named. This second gain stage is followed by another EQ filtering arrangement, this time with the tone control being part of a low pass filter, able to take treble out of the signal and tame the bright high end. We can see just how much the waveform changes over the sweep of this control, even helping extend the apparent clean range of the gain knob. The final section here is a little odd. We see an op amp IC which is protected from clipping by a couple of diodes across its input. Naturally we can expect the op amp to amplify the signal, but it's the contents of the feedback network which decides what gets amplified. This block of components here does the same job as an inductor, and with the rest of the network we've got something very similar to a wah pedal filter. The op amp is amplifying only a narrow band of frequencies somewhere in the lower mids. We can see this frequency peak clearly on the scope traces centred around 130Hz. Finally there is an output buffer and the signal leaves the blues driver. 
Yup, I'm doing it again. I'm watching videos on Skillshare to try and learn a few things. It's thanks to Skillshare that I know how to use programs like Illustrator where I create all of my graphical elements. But I'd like to get better at animating them so they move around on screen a little bit more fancy-like. Fortunately, After Effects animation classes are abundant on Skillshare, and I'm trying to learn a few tricks from Jake Bartlett in his class on animation principles, where he takes the classic rules of animation and applies them to an After Effects project. With any luck, once I've had time to go through this, I should be implementing some smoother and more interesting animations in my videos in the future. But if video editing isn't your thing, then Skillshare also have classes on art, music, photography, cooking, and much more. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial. Plenty of time to learn something new over the holidays. So whether you are wanting to perfect that creative hobby, progress in your career, or perhaps even start your own business, then a Skillshare membership is the ideal way to invest in yourself and engage in your hobbies and passions all year long. Once again, you will find that link in the description and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hopefully you can see that even though this is a fairly complicated circuit, for an analog guitar pedal at least, there's not much different going on inside the blues driver than would be inside any other distortion pedal. We buffer the signal, amplify it through a discrete transistor op amp, filter it to flatten the EQ curve, hard clip it with diodes, amplify it again with a second discrete transistor op amp, Filter it again, but this time add a tone control, then amplify a very select group of frequencies to finalize the sound, and buffer it one last time on the way out. At low gain settings, the blues driver provides mostly clean amplification, with only a little bit of distortion coming from the clipping diodes. But with a larger input signal, or turning up the pedal's gain control, we can overload those discrete transistor elements, adding to the distortion, providing a textured and complex drive sound. You'll get the best out of this pedal if you have a very dynamic playing style, constantly riding the guitar's volume control and changing up how hard you hit the strings. This responds to that kind of playing very well indeed. But if you're not one of the skillful blues guys, and I'm not, then there's still a lot of potential here to use this as a level boosting overdrive or a stacking distortion pedal to get even heavier sounds. I'll be using a Harley Benton Thinline Telecaster and a Gibson Les Paul for guitars, and I'll be running the blues driver straight into the lead channel of my Tone King Imperial, as I find that this sounds best going into an amplifier that's pushing into its own breakup. I'll be making the cab with Lewitt microphones, and inside that cabinet I'm trialling a 1960s Alnico speaker for a little bit of vintage flair. <laughs>
this has helped in understanding what's going on inside the Blues driver. This is quite a different sounding effect to many of the upper mid focus drive pedals on the market thanks to its discrete transistor design, multiple distortion generation points and the low mid focus of the active peak filter. It's got a great low gain range which makes it useful as an overdrive, the overloading transistors give it a fuzz kick and there are plenty of stackable distortion sounds in between. There are affiliate links in the description should you want to get one of these for yourself and don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, keep it loud and stay safe. Blue, 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 blue,